First of all, can we talk Erebus? Please do, yeah. Erebus, this is the new book, the story of a ship. Now, of course, this is very close to my heart because a lot of it has got to do with Antarctica, but there's so much to this story. It's an yes. amazing tale, isn't it? It is a great tale and one that I just happened upon by, by chance. I was researching um, about a guy called Joseph Hooker, found out this guy, this great botanist in the 19th century, signed on at the age of 22 to go to Antarctica for four years. This was 1839. I didn't know ships were going to Antarctica then. And this little ship, the Erebus, tough little ship, no engines, just sails, went down to the Antarctic, discovered there was an Antarctic continent, found a volcano, circumnavigated Antarctica, got stuck in the ice, nearly got crushed, and no one knows anything about it. I know. Came back four years later with an incredible amount of information. It is, it is extraordinary that nobody knows this story, and the thing about it is it just comes to life. You know, you've written it. I know it's take, it took a lot, a lot of love and a lot of research to actually do this, but it was brilliant reading it because you really felt as if you were there. Well, that, that's... you were experiencing it. These people were real. You know, people like Franklin that we've heard about. People, but yeah. they were real people. And well, that's... that was the key thing with the book. I thought I'm not a qualified naval historian. I'm not going to know all the facts and all the details. But what I what I'm interested in is people and what they were feeling at the time and how these. These people went into the unknown. I mean, they didn't know where they were going, what they were going to find. And, and they were seeing icebergs, and it was all new. First time anyone had ever seen an iceberg. Can you imagine the first time yeah. somebody saw that? That's yeah. astonishing. Yeah, and they also write something down about it. And I loved getting the crew information. Yes. The officers all had their journals. Mm. But some members of the crew, they couldn't write very grammatically or anything like that. There were no commas or dots or anything like that. But they just, they, they got the emotion of where they were and the, the extraordinariness of what they were doing. Yes. And, of course, I mean, the end of the journey was... Well, the end of Erebus is career was to get lost in the ice and that was a great tragedy so it, it was a great success and a great tragedy exactly it's all it's all in here and i, I absolutely loved it i had to read it at one sitting did you yes i really? did uh -huh. yeah one it kept sitting? me up Good it kept Lord. me up i want that <laughs> please, ages, please. Yes, ages and ages. That. Yeah. it was it was fantastic it was really 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 so, oh, I'm so glad interesting it's a... I'm glad it's a good tale, because that's a, what I wanted. I didn't want it to be too lots of, lots of facts. Yeah. I want it to be a story. Sure. Mm. But I remember um, you gave a brilliant, brilliant talk at the National Geographic Society. I felt very grown up being in the audience. And you said one of the things, the, the things that, ha that human beings have to have is curiosity. Yeah. And you're right. And that's you, because you're curious about everything. You were in North Korea being curious. I have been able to see a lot or con a lot of people into paying money to send me <laughs> out there. Oh, but you're... I mean, it really was amazing. I, I loved what you did. We have, we've got a map of the world here. Oh. And you've been to just about, as we said, just about everywhere. Look, we're colouring in all the where, dots. Where am I? As to where... You're there. You've been everywhere. Which am Look. I? Which colour am I? You're the colours. Oh, and the only bits mm. that you've not been to are the grey bits. Oh, the grey bits, not yes. much. Oh. Although, Sweden, you didn't... Have you not been to Sweden? Yeah, I've been to Sweden, yes. Colour yes. Sweden in, Colour guys. Sweden, Colour Sweden yeah, in, he's Colour been Sweden. there. Sweden okay. goes pink. Sweden goes pink, yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what about... Yeah, all of it. I mean, it's hard to... I've not, there's anywhere. a big gap there in, um, in West Africa, South West Africa. Right. The really dangerous bits. That's true, the really with dangerous the, bits. the jungles and all that. And, and all nor have I been to Madagascar, that island there. Oh, you there. have to go there. You have to go John there. Cleese went there. I mean, yes. that... That is quite something to get him that out. That would be something. And all the like stands, that. Uzbekistan... Have stands. All I haven't done Central Asia. No, I'd love to go there. That would be the next project, maybe, after North Korea? Well, I don't know. I'm, how, I'm... how was North Korea? I mean, was it really odd? Were you, were you, did you have minders there all the time? It was very odd, and we were looked after, in the sense we were, we were kind of had, yeah, yeah. had people with us all the time, making sure we didn't take anything they didn't want us to see. Right. But they were... We were able to talk to them. We were able to win their trust. No. But the people themselves seemed to actually... You know, yeah. quite um, friendly, lively. They enjoyed a drink. They loved to sing. We had some, you know, jokes with them and all that. You so celebrated it... your birthday there, didn't you? Oh, gosh, yes, yes. <laughs> I celebrated my 75th birthday in, in North, North Korea. Korea. I love it. Doing it. And it was a wonderful thing because um, we were doing a long day's work. I was going to be shot in the fields doing some farming stuff and all that. And so I had to be leave at 6.30 that morning. And at 10 to 6, the phone rings, and it's, it's my uh, Korean minder saying, Mr Palin, uh, please, you must be downstairs. I said, well, like, it's 6.30. He said, oh, no, the uh, time difference between North and South Korea has been abolished <laughs> because of the recent talks. It's now 6.30 and you're late. <laughs> So I was right in the thick of politics there. <laughs> the night of my birthday, they abolished the time That's difference. That's right, crazy. Absolutely crazy. And you bonded over Monty Python, told them about that. Yes. The affection for that still is 
incredible, isn't it? I mean, you look, you just look there and you think, wow. And yeah. it's still as funny now as it was back then. That's amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, it's jumped a couple of generations. I think the, the, last, the last concert, the great big sort of ten nights Huge. at the O2, we never expect to do more than two. Um, and 15,000 people a night. <clears throat> and it was, I mean, I mean, that's the thing, really. I mean, Graham, sadly, is, is dead anyway, but, but we integrate him into the show. Um, and, you know, Terry Jones is now not yeah. terribly well, so I don't think we could all get together no, and, and do I another show. No, and I think that show. was a lovely way to just say farewell, in a way. It was, it was just a lovely way it, to do it. It was a great yeah, way to go. I mean, there's a lot of blokes in their 70s doing a show that they recorded in their 20s Perfect. was quite a gamble. I know. I mean, even just getting up on stage <laughs> without nurses in attendance was pretty good.